Hi, this is Amr Abdigawad, and we're going to speak today about achondroplasia. Objectives of this lecture, first we'd like to describe the genetics and pathology of achondroplasia, and then we're going to speak about the musculoskeletal manifestations of achondroplasia, and then we're going to speak about the treatment options of achondroplasia, both medical and surgical treatment. A good source that you can use to read more about achondroplasia and other musculoskeletal condition in kids is this book, which is Pediatric Orthopedic, a handbook for primary care physician written by myself and Dr. Naga. What is the definition of achondroplasia? Achondroplasia is a rhizomelic dysplasia, meaning it mainly affects the proximal segment of the extremity. So in achondroplasia, the extremity is short. So the upper extremity is short, the lower extremity is short. However, the upper segment or the proximal segment of the extremity is more affected than the distal segment. So the uh, upper arm is more affected uh, than the uh, uh, forearm. Uh, the thigh is more affected than the lower leg. So this is definition of rhizomelic dysplasia. So in achondroplasia, the whole extremity is short. So the whole upper extremity, the whole lower extremity is short. However, the uh, proximal part, the arm and the thigh are more affected than the uh, distal part which is the forearm or the lower leg. This is the definition of achondroplasia. Achondroplasia is by far the most common type of all bone dysplasias. Uh, the condition is inherited as autosomal dominant. This is very important. So achondroplasia is inherited as an autosomal dominant. Uh, however, about 80% of the cases are due to a new dominant mutation. So achondroplasia happened due to a, a gene mutation um, of the gene fibroblast growth factor receptor 3. Uh, this is a schematic presentation of this gene. Uh, if you see here, there is a transmembrane domain, and it was found in a study that uh, virtually uh, all cases of achondroplasia, about 99% of these cases, happened due to a specific uh, glycine to arginine substitutions of the amino acid uh, 380 in this transmembrane domain in the gene encoding for the fibroblast growth factor receptor. Chapter 3. Let's discuss now the clinical uh, pictures of achondroplasia. First, you'll see a normal-sized head. Why is that? Because the head is formed by a different uh, ossification process than the extremity. It's called intramembranous ossification, and this is not affected in achondroplasia, so you'll find a normal-sized uh, head. Uh, you will see also that the trunk is normal, is relatively normal size. Uh, as we said before, the uh, arm and thigh are very short. Uh, the uh, forearm and the lower leg are short, but not to the same degree as the arm uh, and the thigh. If you look to the hand, you will have what's called trident hand. It means that there is an increased space between the middle and the ring finger. Let's discuss now the general manifestations of achondroplasia. So these children, as we said before, they will be severely short, meaning that they will be less than the fifth percentile for their age. Um, the intelligence is usually normal. As we said, they, uh, they had a normal sized head, normal sized trunk, uh, and uh, they will have some delayed milestones, meaning that usually they don't walk unsupported on, uh, until the age of 18 to 24 months. Uh, this is mainly because of their hypotonia, uh, and uh, uh, the child will have uh, difficulty in balancing uh, their normal sized head on their short extremities. For skeletal manifestations, as we discard, discuss, discussed before, it's uh, short limbs, especially the arm and the thigh. Um, the genoverums uh, mean that the leg is pointing inward. Uh, genoverum, or what's known as uh, bow legs, means that the uh, lower leg are pointing inwards toward the midline. Uh, so these kids usually have genoverum, as you can see in this picture and in this x-ray, the lower leg um, is pointing uh, towards the midline. Uh, trident hand, as we said before, is the increased distance between the third and the fourth finger. And these children usually has lumbar hyperlordosis. It means that they have exaggerated uh, lumbar lordosis uh, in their lower back, and they have lumbar and cervical spinal stenosis, which we are going to discuss in detail now. Patients with achondroplasia may have lumbar and or cervical spinal stenosis. Uh, it means um, the vertebral canal in which the spinal uh, cord uh, or the roots of the spinal cords uh, run may be tight and um, that can cause symptoms. So if the patient has cervical stenosis, uh, that means that the vertebral canal in the level of the cervical spine is tight. Um, it can compress the spinal cord leading to cervical myopathy. Cervical myopathy can cause quadriparesis, it can cause hypotonia. It can cause a central and obstructive sleep apnea and sometimes can cause a sudden death. Uh, 
Um, however, uh, lumbar stenosis uh, uh, in the lumbar area, uh, you have um, the, the roots of the spinal cord. The spinal cord itself uh, ends at uh, L1. So lumbar stenosis will cause compression of the roots and this root compression can cause bilateral leg pain uh, and or leg weakness. So what about treatment? Uh, we have to remember that most patients with achondroplasia don't require any form of treatment. They can be functional. Uh, they can uh, live in the community. Uh, they have uh, minimal uh, problems uh, affecting them. However, um, height gaining procedures, either medical or surgical, can be offered to the families um, or the patients if they want to have this option. So growth hormone, which is somatotropin, um, can be used um, to augment the height in patients with achondroplasia. Uh, the greatest acceleration in growth uh, is usually during, uh, seen during the first year of treatment and in those kids um, who had the lowest gro growth potentials before treatment. So the very, very short uh, achondroplasia is usually the one who uh, get uh, the greatest uh, acceleration and it's usually, as we said, in the first year of treatment. And young age at initiation of therapy which means the child is better to be less than six years is recommended to obtain the maximum benefits um, it has to be noted that the results of uh, the growth hormone um, uh, treatment for patient of achondroplasia uh, has been controversial uh, with conflicting uh, results from uh, different papers Height gain can also be obtained surgically, uh, so if the patient and the family are interested in that option, they can be referred for an orthopedic surgeon for uh, surgical lengthening. Uh, these uh, surgeries depend on the concept of distraction osteogenesis. Uh, it means that the bone is cut and then gradually uh, lengthened at a rate of about one millimeter a day. So you see this is a chondroplegic patient undergoing lengthening surgery, so she is undergoing lengthening of both femurs and both tibias and fibulas on the same time. If you see the frame is applied on the femur and then the bone is cut and then um, gradually distracted to at a rate of one millimeter a day the same is applied here for uh, the tibias uh, these surgeries require about uh, six uh, months of having the frame to obtain about five centimeter in the uh, femur and five uh, uh, centimeter in the leg uh, so it's not an easy for the patient or the families um, there is uh, some complications that are associated with this procedure so extensive uh, conversation has to be done with the patient and the family before doing this procedure um, so to make sure that the, the family and the patient under no, uh, uh, understand what exactly they are going to go through um, and also these surgeries uh, are to be done with orthopedic surgeons who are experienced with these types of surgeries. Another reason for orthopedic referral, if uh, these patients with achondroplasia have a, a severe uh, cervical or lumbar stenosis because they may require surgical decompression. Thank you very much. All my videos are for educational purpose only. Please consult your doctor before any decision.